are we are we really going to have to talk about the like the the world's scariest MCU villain today? I'm not sure there's any reason to talk about Thanos. That's not the villain that I'm talking about. Yeah, here. Nate, he's he's talking about the one that was just uh, put in Loki. The uh, Dad, we're not going to. He who remains is a great villain, but I don't think he's the scariest villain. That's not the one either. I'm missing something. Come on, guys. Miss Minutes scared the living daylights out of me when she showed up in the finale. I found that funny more than anything. I know. You guys have been sending images of her to me for the last three days. Oh, yeah. It's awesome. We're 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 not letting you live this one down. Yeah, for sure. I guess we'll regroup so we can start the show after these ads specifically chosen to ensure the sacred timeline remains intact and a thousand versions of Miss Minutes aren't unleashed on the galaxy. (laughs) This is Tatooine Sons. Achuta, Star Wars, Marvel, DC, and... Ghostbusters fans. Who you gonna call? Oh, you guys lost it. I had we gave you the opportunity. We didn't, we didn't have that one uh, planned out. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Uh, if you want to get some really cool pop culture merch for Star Wars, we just added some uh, Miss Minutes, TVA, and Kang shirts. We got a Citizen Kang Dad was talking yeah, that about. Was That's a cool shirt. That's a good shirt. Um, go to our T Public store. The link is in the show notes. Um, you can find all sorts of really cool stuff on there. And what's cool is all of the proceeds, if you use our link, will go to help a child living in poverty through one child. So not only do you get some cool pop culture merch, but you get to help a kid living in extreme poverty at the same time. It's true. It's true. All of it. What is the name of the Porg on the Millennium Falcon? Force is strong in my family. What do you think his name is? (laughs) It's a big moment. I am a Jedi, like my father before me. Maybe Turbis? Do or do not. There is no try. Turbis? Pablo, if you're listening to this live stream, that Porg's name is now Turbis. It's a good Star Wars name. We're not done yet. These guys record an awesome podcast called Tatooine Sons. Everybody was lit. Send us this link about like this this Marvel NFT like thing. Non fungible I think is what the tokens, tokens or, or tokens. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, that's pretty cool. It's gonna be like you know, fan art, like collectibles, like figurines and things like that, 3D mm-hmm. art that are limited edition, tokenized uh, using Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies, mm-hmm. and they can be collectible. And there's, I mean, they they increase in value. It's going to be really kind of kind of different. We looked at them a little bit. So. Yeah, I looked They're at the, I downloaded the app. They are expensive, and each gem in the there that's our currency is gems is like quite, counts to a dollar. Mm. So stuff is expensive yeah, on it's, there. That's nuts. Well, welcome to Tatooine Sons, a pop culture podcast. We believe that pop culture is the mythology of this generation, and that there is a story written on our souls. These myths speak to that story and that's why we talk about star wars and marvel and dc and some other stuff when it comes up yeah I don't but those are the three things that we've been talking yet. about no we don't talk about ghostbusters really Maybe when talk- the movie comes out the new one yeah i'm sure we'll talk about it then there's a lot of stuff i'm david i'm the dad hi, hi dad hi guys i'm joined by a couple of awesome sons how are you doing today mr nathan i'm good you're gonna be talking the batman who laughs i am I'm gonna try to you know continue on that it's not funny it looks scary when i looked up he's images a of it scary bad guy he is a, spir- he's a very 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 bad guy. take the darkness of batman and mix it with the insaneness of joker you got dark. pretty you get, you get this yeah, it was dark yeah. yeah so we'll talk about that in a little bit sam you're gonna be uh, Loki finale in Finale of Loki, yeah. Plenty, plenty to talk about. So a I'm whole excited. lot to talk about. And before we all do all that, we're going to talk a little bit about Bad Batch. We're going to put yeah. stars at the top of the show again this week. So I'm excited to talk about that. Um, and uh, it'll be a little bit different segment. We're not going to be spending a lot of time breaking down that episode. So it'll be a lot of fun. But before we get to that, um, I've got a problem I need some help with. And so we're, re- we're reaching out to I the am. fans. I am. I'm so done with this <laughs> mosquito infestation that we have in our backyard. I come out in the morning. I like to sit out there in the morning at sunrise with my cup of coffee and my Bible and reading my Bible and just kind of taking some time in the quiet, overlooking our big giant 
field in the backyard and the lake and all that other. It's beautiful. It is. It's gorgeous, except for the fact that I am. Uh, you know that when um, on Pleakley. Lilo and Stitches, Pleakley, yeah, when he comes to the planet, he thinks that they were told, or he doesn't he like believe that they're, they're sacred they're, gods? No, no, or something? no. They're a uh, extinct species. They were sent yeah. here to Earth to uh, repopulate, so they wouldn't go extinct. And he gets like attacked because he won't kill them. No, he gets attacked by millions of them all at once because he won't kill them. Right. I want to kill them. <laughs> so, right. so you got like a Help lightning me kill zapper mosquitoes. Thing for it. I mean, thousands of dead mosquitoes every morning on the yard, and it's on the back, the back patio, and I still can't control it. So it's biblical. It is. It is. It's like the freaking plague every morning uh, <laughs> when I go kills. out there. Like you know, there was an eleventh plague. It was the mosquitoes, and it's still happening. It's right uh, here um, in our backyard. Me on yeah, so me and Nate, you got to hang out at the pastor's house on Sunday. I did. Night. That was kind of that was cool. fun. Yeah, so. we talked DC and. He he knows his DC stuff. And yeah, what was that like talking with like the pastor of your church who knows you know Batman and DC comics on a on a level that's way above what your brother and I know. Yeah, it was fun to talk about that with somebody because it, it's not usual and because you guys don't get into that stuff as much as I do, and so it was fun to talk about the movies and the animated movies, which you guys still need to watch. Um, and what what was like the the animated movie that he seemed to like the most? Do you remember? Did you guys uh, talk Dark Knight Returns Part One? part two and, and you ones it, are good i've seen those you, i've seen the second seen one second part no, i haven't seen good. either i haven't seen either they're good that's cool well it was his is birth- he familiar with batman who laughs i think so oh ah, interesting i think he's read it see he needs to it's twisted is what it looks like to <laughs> he's me. a very very evil dude batman not the pastor oh right. yeah. <laughs> it's batman who laughs and there's the your shout out uh <laughs> and so it was his birthday yesterday so we wanted to wish him a happy birthday so happy, happy birthday, birthday Stuart. we won't sing because i don't because i i could sing i you know i'll do an aria no i'm not gonna do roll that. in our piano in here and yeah, start playing exactly we're not gonna do that all right um <laughs> some ragtime happy birthday uh, yeah exactly <laughs> i have a little we've had a little fun but it's time to get a little bit serious. Um, last week we talked about the controversy with uh, with Cam Ray and mm-hmm. him trying to steal our brand and mimic our mock our podcast and and all of that. Um, I wanted to just go ahead and and you know well, let's get it, address it and get it out of the way. I'm going to play the video that he put out first on Twitter, um, where it, which kind of started all the controversy, and, and you can listen for yourselves. I'm at the cinema. And the only reason to go to the cinema is to watch Star Wars. There's nothing else. There's no other reason to go to the the theater. But I'm here to make a special announcement that I'm starting a brand new Star Wars podcast. And I know what you're thinking. I've tried this before, and some crybabies have said that maybe I copied their name or it was too close to their name. Eh, Legal drama. This time, I'm for real, and I'm so excited to be announcing it here today for the first time. And it's going to be a Star Wars only podcast. I'm not going to be covering garbage like Marvel or DC or pop culture, any of this mess, okay? Some podcasters have even said that pop culture is the the new, uh, what is what did they say, the new mythology of the, this generation. Oh my gosh. They, they've sold out. They even named their podcast after Star Wars lands. Anyway, let's, let's, cut, let's cut to the chase. I'm proud to introduce to you for the first time the Camuine Sons podcast featuring myself, Cam Ray, and my two clone sons, Camuel the Hutt. And not only Camuel the Hutt, but BB, BB Ray. <laughs> BB Ray, that's it. And guess what? He named Bub the Monkey Lizard, who's canon. Well, Bub's still missing. But anyway, listen, just be, just check out Camuine Sons podcast, Star Wars only. And- All right, we're going to stop it there because then an airplane comes over. What you need to understand is on this video, we're at the movie theater with Cam when he's recording this. I think I mentioned that on last week's yeah. show. We walk up behind him while he's saying all this stuff, and it kind of it it didn't get ugly like we didn't like get no. into a fight, but it was pretty clear that there was gonna that that, that there's something bad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we freaking took him to to see Black Widow, and like, didn't didn't you end up paying for his like popcorn or something? Yeah, we you know we helped him out a little bit because you know that's that that we tried to be generous and kind, and we had an opportunity with our pop our A list or something to let him get popcorn with us. Yeah, and, see how that turned out. And and all of that. So anyway, we had we had some <laughs> uh some legal proceedings um that took place and court is exhausting. It well it wasn't really court, but it was like lawyers talking to each <laughs> it felt other. Like court. And it felt like it. Yeah. And Cam finally um well I'll let him explain for himself. 
Hello, fans and followers. This is a sincere and vulnerable statement straight from my heart. After stellar legal counsel from Maya Butts Hertz Attorneys at Law and Kakamimi advice and much less than stellar counsel from Stanley and Fellamore and Fellamore and Fellamore Attorneys at Law, I admit my guilt in stealing the name and logo of the popular Tatooine Sons podcast, altering it slightly to include my name and claiming it as an original idea. It was not original at all, and I, in fact, devised the evil scheme last night while watching the Marvel film Black Widow with David Jesse and his family. To make matters worse, the entire theater experience was on David's dime, including him buying me the large popcorn bucket after I whined when he forced me after he so graciously offered me a kitty snack pack. Effective immediately, I will erase all 23 33 episodes of the podcast I've recorded today, and I will remove all text and graphics that refer to the Camuine Sons podcast. Finally, Stanley and Fellamore and Fellamore and Fellamore attorneys at law are the poopiest lawyers ever. They're making me say this! My butts hurts! All right. <laughs> So, all right, the statement's out of the way. Everything is back to normal. We're all good now. We're all friends with Cam. Yeah. yeah. Everything is good. It's time to move on with the show. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, after a week of Star Wars fans acting like, well, Star Wars fans, <laughs> uh, yeah. Dave Filoni and the team at the Bad Batch pull all of our worries and put all of our worries and concerns to rest. And yes, I'm talking about the silliness regarding Orn Free Ta. Pokey religions and ancient weapons are no match for a good blaster at your side, kid. Rebellions are built on hope. Force is with me, and I am with the Force. If you live long enough, you see the same eyes in different people. Well, I know, back to his, his, his impressive moment, I thought he'd look way worse. And I mean, yeah. that's a, a very specific location for the burns to be Right, <laughs> right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, let's talk about this. Let's jump into this episode. Like I said earlier, it's not going to be the same, you know, where we kind of break down scene by scene or, or thing like that. I want to talk about some different elements of the show. And the first one, um, we... We teased it uh, coming into this. Uh, we joked about it kind of in passing last week, um, <laughs> but the attempted assassination of Senator Ornfrey Ta, it sort of sent Star Wars fandom into another death spiral uh, this week. We so, always have to find something to complain. Yeah, about. They, they got all fans got all upset about changes to the official Star Wars canon. Um, all right. So here's the here's the deal. If you're not really familiar with it. Senator Ornfrey Ta, he's the Twilix senator. Um, he's prevalent in he's in Clone Wars. Uh, yeah, I and he's actually bit. in like Attack of the Clones: Revenge of the Sith a little mm -hmm. bit, a little bit. Um, and we we don't see him after that, do we? In like he's not in Rebels. We no, don't see him. Not, in I don't okay. think so. Uh, well, anyway, Senator Ornfrey Ta and Champ Sindula, um, Harris Sindula's dad, yeah. are both major players in the novel Lords of the Sith. It takes place. About five years later than where we are in the Bad Batch. Now, before we talk about the controversy, Sam, you, Lords of the Sith is one of the the few Star Wars novels that you've actually read. Not yeah, just it was an a audio long book. time ago. You read long it. time ago. Um, were you concerned about possible discontinuities in Star Wars canon after last week? Honestly, no, because I really don't remember that book hardly at all. Um, like I said, it was years and years ago when I read it. I did enjoy it. But I don't remember much of the story. So at basically, all. the whole uh, Senator Ornfrey Ta is a major player. He's okay. a major character in this, and this takes a place again. It takes place five years after the events that we're seeing in the Bad Batch right now. So 
so many fans were were up in arms about this because Senator Winfrey Todd was assassinated in the last episode. Mm. Um, Nate, yeah, um, they they say the words at the end of the episode last week. Mm-hmm. It was an attempted assassination, yeah. right? Um, it, so what we found out this week is that it meant exactly what we thought. Yeah, that it meant it was an attempted, what an attempted assassination yeah, usually Senator, means. Yeah, Senator Ta is expected to make a full recovery. Um, we find out in this week's episode, thanks again to the wonderful medical technology of the Galactic Empire. So, Nate, is this once again just another lesson in trusting Dave Filoni and the story group to make the right decisions for Star Wars? Yes, everybody's like, in Dave Filoni, you trust we, you know. He's so good. Make him the new like creator of all Star Wars. And then when he does one thing in an episode, which will have a follow-up, everybody gets all up in arms that it's not going to fit into the canon. He knows what he's doing. You know he knows what he's doing. Let him let him do the work and let the story group do what they do best, which yeah. they do. If there's one thing we've learned, it's that Dave is a storytelling genius. When it comes to everything. And a Star he Wars fan. And a Star Wars fan. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he's talking about. If something doesn't make sense, give it time. If it's the finale, there'll be. If there's another season, it'll get wrapped up. Like it's all right, y'all. Yeah, I mean, it's it's <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I don't want to. <laughs> well, going. wrapped uh, up. Uh, you talk about the rebels finale, <laughs> right? So, what were your initial thoughts on this episode, the one that we watched this week? What did you guys think about it? I thought it was good. I felt like it actually moved the story along more, especially with what happened at the end. Now that Crosshair is officially okay to hunt down the Bad Batch with his squad, so we're moving along with that which is great. I know you're probably going to talk about that a little later, but um, yeah, I enjoyed it. We got to see more Hera, more Chopper being sassy and, you know, Chopper, chopper. Was, was classic Chopper. Classic Chopper. Oh, yeah. It's got to be Dave, right? Doing the voice. Oh, Obviously. of course. Who else? Okay. Yeah. What'd you think about the episode, Sam? I thought it was good. Um, it was good to have Bad Batch back for more than a little bit more than, you know, five seconds, but that's not to say the last episode wasn't good. Um, this I thought it was, makes the heart grow fonder. Exactly. Yes. Um, it was really good. It felt like Bad Batch. It, like you said, Nate moved the story forward, and we're really getting getting to see Hera like come into her own and stuff. Um, and it was cool how at the end, Tex, you know, taught her how to uh, scramble a ship signature. Come on, yeah, I goes mean, like. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Well, it was really clear in the last episode that even though the scene was very short, um, Omega and Hera really made a strong connection with each other. Hmm. Um, I guess, it, you know, um, it was so strong that, that Hera turns to Omega uh, as the only option that she has to help her free her parents from the Empire uh, in this episode. There is a moment in this week's show that kind of really hit hard for me. It was um, when Hera is trying to convince Hunter and the Bad Batch to come to her aid. And she says that her parents will pay them a lot of credits (laughs) if they succeed. Mm. Uh, Nate, is this, are we finally getting to the moment when Hunter realizes that they can no longer stay on the sidelines in this battle against the tyranny of the Empire. I think that this, yeah, exactly. And with Crosshair now hunting them and the Empire hunting them, I think they now know, okay, well, let's just fight them. And we can't stay as mercenaries forever. And, I mean, we're taking money from people who are in need for our own self-gain. And I just, that's not what soldiers do. And that's what Omega was saying. And so, yeah, I think this was kind of a, it was a very important episode, no matter what anybody else says. Well, no, I think it was, a, it was, it was an important moment, especially at the end when they, they do, they pay they try the bad batch. They pay Hunter and the bad batch credits and he rejects them and tells them that they, they're going to do it. I, I still feel like he isn't quite a hundred percent there yet, but I feel like he's, he's getting there. He, he understands it. And that turning down those credits there is a sign of, of that taking place. Sam in this, ep- uh, you know, uh, lead up to this episode, fans were just as upset, maybe even more so that the last episode barely had any bad batch in it. Um, this really kind of felt like the second half of a two part story overall. What did you think about the whole story? Both episodes together? No, it, together it creates a much more uh, cohesive story. Um, I can understand where the confusions would come from. If you didn't know that there was going to be a follow up episode. Um, none of us knew that they were going to be continuing on the storyline this week. So it, it, it's confusing as to, you know, why would they have this le- that last episode if there was nothing to follow it up? But overall, it works out to be a really, 
think of it like a movie, you know, there's that little meeting in the, the first episode with Omega and Hera. That is the, um, I guess MacGuffin of this episode without that little interaction in the first half, you wouldn't have the second half. So it, it really works together to form a, a whole cohesive story. Another thing that's being criticized uh, about this show in general is sort of the cameo of the week type um, <laughs> approach. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, where we, we get Rex and we get, who else would we have? We got Cad Bane, Cad we Bane get Rex, Fennec, Fennec Shand, Shand, now Heron Chopper, Kanan in the first episode, yeah. that type of thing. Um, nobody seemed to complain about this in season two of Mandalorian when we (laughs) got Cobb Vanth Mm. and Boba Fett and Bo-Katan and Ahsoka Ahsoka and Luke Luke Skywalker. Nobody seemed to complain about it in that one. Why do you think that this is a problem in the Bad Batch episode or the series? I'm not sure. Um, Maybe it's because it is a bit of a longer form show. Um, so people, you know, they have more time to like notice that sort of thing, or maybe just the, even the way they bring it in, it's an animated show, right? People are going to think of it or or, are going to criticize it in a different way than a live action show. Plus Mandalorian was the first live action show ever. So they're going to just view the two shows very differently. They've already had two, three, um, animated shows to compare, Bad Batch too, so they're going to think about it differently. What do you think, BB Nate? I think that just people don't understand that this is how it works. This is how Star Wars works. They meet people. That's what happens. And I mean, you, the the more you explore this galaxy, the more people you know. The smaller the galaxy. Exactly. Gets. Like we're going to see more people that we're familiar with because. There are more people in the galaxy to see. Exactly. And, I mean, with Mandalorian, I think you just rattled off six characters, and there's six episodes. There was eight. There was eight episodes? And, okay. okay. Well, still. A whole two. A whole two more. And, I mean, you just... There's cameos in every show. And I don't understand why it's a problem in this one and not any other show like Marvel or even Mandalorian. I just don't get it. Yeah. We did get a new character this in this arc, I would say, you know, these two episodes mm. uh, together. The, and he's become really popular really fast. Hauser, this uh, clone I keep, whenever uh, commander I see his general name, or something like that. Whenever I see or hear his name, I keep thinking of howitzers. Like. Okay. Um, he seems to be a great addition to the stable of some fantastic clone characters that we've gotten mm-hmm. uh, in you know these series. I would say Clone Wars and then Bad Batch kind of being the same storyline. It, it's just um, all Clone Wars. Um, with it. We start... Uh, or, 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 well, we saw this a little bit last week when he was questioning the Empire's policies and procedures and things that they wanted to do. This week, Hauser flat out led his troops to refuse to follow mm-hmm. Imperial orders. Sam, are we seeing the start of a clone rebellion against the Empire? And is that why the clones are going to be phased out? That's immediately what I thought when I saw the scene. And it was really, really impactful because... Um, well, first off, I'm slightly confused as to how they're able to do that with the inhib- inhibitor chips, but maybe it's because they weren't given a direct order or something. I don't know. Um, but I, I think it's it's interesting how some clones rebelled while others didn't. Like, you would think they'd all have the same mindset, but each clone is still their own unique person. Um, so it's cool to see the differences there. But I do I think that this is the start of that rebellion. Yeah. And this is an explanation why we don't see him later on. Mm-hmm. Nate, is this why um, if we get this rebellion, <laughs> um, is this going to mean that we see a lot of dead clones? I mean, the Empire has to win. Yeah. In this, right. Yeah, of course. But we don't know how many clones there are just spread out around the galaxy. I mean, we have Gregor and Wolf and we don't know how they get out. You don't even know where they were. And so there's a lot that could happen. And that's what this show is doing. It's filling the gap between three and four, which is something that I know a lot of people are interested to see. And and I am. And I mean, that's why I love Rebels so much. So final takeaways. Uh, What do you where where, where are you at with the the show going Um, forward? Rebellion or clone rebellion starting uh, crosshairs like hot on the, the, the trail of. Bad Batch and Bad Batch is going to have to start really reconsidering their motives. Yeah, BB Nate, final takeaway. I just think that 
crosshair is going to have a big part in the next, the last like quarter of this series. I mean, we're getting pretty close to the end here. So yeah, we got four more episodes left. Um, you know, we, for a few episodes ago, we talked about the need for the series to start moving towards uh, the purpose uh, for the bad batch. I don't think we're fully there yet. No, but I do believe that we're seeing that begin to take shape. And again, like we said, just four more episodes to go this season. Yeah. Sam. Uh, well, not much happened in the finale of Loki. Yeah, it was kind of boring. Yeah. So instead, we're going into a deep dive into the rich history and lore of Miss Minutes. No, we're not. That's going to be exciting. Not happening. No, oh, who am I kidding? Not talking about Miss Minutes. No. No, no. Everything has changed in this episode. We're going to do plenty of our infamous Tatooine Sun speculations here in a few. Speculations sure to go wrong. Oh, definitely. Um, I'm, I'm, I might go for some right ones. We've actually done pretty good the last few uh, things that we've done. And that's coming up after these ads specifically chosen for you uh, by the one guy at the TVA who is sitting around acting like nothing is wrong while the rest of the team is running around in an out loud panic. <laughs> this is Tatooine Suns. Hey, what? it's review time. Hi. Reviews. It's review time. Hey. We finally got some. We did? We did. We got two. Wow. We got two reviews. This is very... Very exciting. It is exciting. It is. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. This is going to give us a lot of confidence. Dad, you got the first one. I do. Okay. Link. Uh, Link Vox a million of faking Star Wars. <laughs> um, this, she's, uh, anyway, pretty awesome. Um, I've seen this podcast. Or this is the review. I've seen this podcast around. Finally gave it a listen because Cam Ray was copying them. <laughs> and if someone is copying them, then it means it's good. I was right. This podcast is great. A dad and his son's talking nerdy topics just like my own family makes it extra special. Uh, take a listen if you haven't yet. Be sure to thank Cam for the free advertising. <laughs> oh, all right. Thank you, Lynn. Thanks. Thank you so and much. Thanks, Cam. And Any thank publicity you, Cam. is good publicity. That's right. Uh, and this next one is from Stuart Davidson. Hey, it's our pastor. Yeah. yeah. Um, so he uh, says, I'm a recent new subscriber to Tatooine Sons. I love the dynamic that David has with Sam and BB Nate. These guys are so knowledgeable about everything Star Wars, the MCU, and the DCEU. They are well-read and studied up on what is occurring in pop culture. David and the boys are funny, witty, and they do a great job of drawing out interesting tidbits from recent episodes of The Bad Batch or the latest Marvel show on Disney+. Plus. I highly recommend this show and look forward to more content in the future. Great job, Tatooine Sons. Hashtag one child. Oh, that's Aww. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So you. if you want to leave a review and, you know, get it... Said on podcast if it's you know clean, um, which you know it's good that that Pastor David yeah it was got that on was here. a good Otherwise, thing. There's a problem. Uh-huh. Well, you guys accused him of being evil earlier. So. <laughs> no, hey, that no. was you. Oh, okay. I was confused. I'm totally confused right now. Okay, <laughs> but you can go to podchaser.com, look up Tatooine Sons on there, and you can give a review for the show itself. And specific episodes. Have we gotten a specific episode one We've got yet? a couple. We've got, we a, got couple. a couple. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, Thank so you. you can do both of those. And every review we get, we will make a donation to one child in your honor. So yeah. that's very cool. Yeah, please do it. Be on your guard. There are older and fouler things than orcs in the deep places of the world. All right, then. Keep your secrets. You're coming to us. He says the footsteps are still There are many magic rings in this world, Bilbo Baggins, and none of them should be used lightly. I think she's awesome. But that moment in the finale when there was no no way you thought that that, that she was showing no, up there. I didn't there. think of it. No. But I found it hilarious. I, I don't know. It was morning. I was watching it. I was kind of chill. I was into it. Next thing I know, she jumps out and scares me. Hey, those big old fat white eyes. Dead, it, and that it, scary country accent. Yeah, it scared me. It, it, it made me jump. And now every time I see her, I can't think. Politely think threatening you. Politely threatening. <laughs> yeah. So anyway. Uh, yeah. So this uh, episode opened up 
quite interesting. There's this opening sequence um, where we heard all these quotes from the Marvel oh, Universe. Yeah. You know, way to go, Tic Tac. Uh, I can do this all day. Dormammu, I've come to bargain. Best one. Uh, there were lots. Um, what is grief if not love? Persevering, <laughs> persevering, and then open your eyes. What Sylvie said in that last episode. Um, and there were a few actually, like there were a few quotes from like real life, like Neil Armstrong and things mm, like that. So interesting. And then it zoomed back in on time, kind of showing, um, you know, the, the like an it was basically like a summary of the MCU in like fifteen seconds or thirty mm. seconds or something. Um, I read this article talking about, you know, the possible significance of why they put this in here, but I want to get your guys' thoughts as to why they put this sequence in this episode. What was it supposed to re- represent? I think it was just supposed to represent that, that that whole thing behind the the Citadel was the timeline, and th- that played in later on in the episode, mm-hmm. and, and it played into how I was right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, it, it just, I think that's really what it was, and I think it was more for like... You know, oh, the normal Marvel music isn't playing. It's the song from the end of Endgame. Yeah, yeah there so. was that, too. I think that they were trying to sort of let us have a moment where we wonder whether or not we can think we're in the MCU. Mm. There's this idea of real world stuff from our world is now part is now part of the MCU. So that kind of are we at a variant timeline out or outside of the sacred timeline or, or whatever? It kind of felt like they were trying to go down that mm. path with it. Yeah, I this um, article and I'm forgetting who it's from. It might be uh, uh, Den of Geek or something, but uh, they said that they think that they put this in here to show that that part of Marvel is it's done. You know, that really? form of the MCU is over now. Everything has changed. Is that you why they that? kind of started with the end of Endgame? Right. And then okay. they moved up to the show, and now everything's changed. So that version mm. of the MCU mm. is gone, which wow. is cool. It's like a, like a swan song to the first, what was it, four phases of the Does that MCU? make you guys emotional at all? A Three little things. bit. Three yeah. You know, it's it is a little of, sad. I mean, 10 years of our lives have been dedicated. Yeah. Yeah, a little over 10 but years. But without any of that, we wouldn't have led up to what's now. So Exactly. It, is, it was a really cool moment, I think. Um, and then we'll talk about uh, Renslayer and Mobius. They had, you know, Mobius in the last episode, he went through a time door back to the uh, TVA to burn the place down or whatever, right? And he goes to confront um, Renslayer and he's, you know, he's like, I'm going to kick your butt if I have to. That doesn't work. <laughs> he's, he's this Mobius. Like, Owen Wilson's just not a fighter. Wow. 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 I'm surprised we didn't get that. Anyway. Wow. Um, we'll get in season two. But we see them have the, this, this conversation, right? And she feels so betrayed by Mobius. You know, Mobius was like, you betrayed me. And she's like, no, I feel just as betrayed by you. In Which this. is so stupid. <laughs> well, yeah, but it's, it's it just comes down to this, like, relativity. But in the end, you know, they, they talk things out. Do you think things are better between these two at this point? No. Or mm. Oh, you still think there's this tension? No, I think that they're they're totally, like, I think Mobius feels completely betrayed. I think that Renslayer feels completely exposed. Mm, I think yep. she, that the that she knows Mobius realizes she had a lot more information than anybody else had, which then makes you question where Renslayer got this information. Is she working directly with Kang? It, is it Kang? Is it He Who Remains? Is it it's you know, Kang? Whoever it Let's is, just say Kang. Let's just go down that. You know, whenever we get there, but she knows what's going on, and Mobius felt betrayed, and I think that she's off. Uh, f- what what, did, what is she off looking for? She's yeah. So she said she went through a time door saying she was going to go look for free will, um, which you know could mean you know, that's why Mobius was back. He's like, you need to give these people their free will. What we're living in right now, this is not free will. Nobody has a choice to make any or any chance to make their own choices. Everything's predestined. And then she. You know, says she's going to go look for free. But wasn't there something earlier in one of the episodes? It may have been that episode, uh, the finale, or it could have been the previous episode, where she's talking about there's only one that has free will. Yeah, I like think that's like, that's the and, guy. That's he who remains, the one at the end of time. I understand, but that does that not tie into what she says? She's like she's, she's going to go look. For- she's looking for. Free will. Free will. Well, that's a, the, person, made that connection. the person who has free will. The only one who has free will is on the other end look of that. for Kang or something? Yeah, it a kind of feels... One. Because it's doesn't Renslayer have a huge connection to Kang in the comics? Yeah, in the comics, she uh, ends up having a pretty romantic relationship with Kang for a while. Um, that, you know, she's not in, related to the TVA like she is in this, but her character does have a actual relationship with Kang. 
I mean, we could see crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, going forward um, on that. Do, do you think that this means that she's no longer like supports the TVA if she's going to look for free will? I don't necessarily think that. She still seems like she's a supporter and is trying to fix the TVA and all this stuff. And it's just this whole finale is was and still is shrouded with mysteries. So oh, yeah, well, as is the entire series. It's true. Mm-hmm. Um, so then we also see Hunter B fifteen. She she's kind of on her own little mission at this point. She goes back to and finds Renslayer's Nexus point, right? Her Nexus event. Her Nexus event. Yeah. Um, and there was a... She goes into the school and into this office, which we find out is Renslayer's office, before she was taken to the TVA. Which is like 2018 or something. Yeah, like yeah it 2018. wasn't long ago, but the TVA is outside of time. So she may have been at the TVA for millennia, but it's only been, what, like... A few Because Kang's from like the third mo- or fourth mo- The 31st yeah. century. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, there was a diploma on Renslayer's wall, though, that reveals her name to be Rebecca Tormine. I think that's how you pronounce it. Okay. Um, this actually becomes Renslayer's alias after a falling out with Kang in the comics. Hmm. So, like what More you're saying. More Kang connection. Exactly. There. Yeah. So, do you think this has any significance? Do you think this is going to come into play later, or is this just more like a little Easter egg they threw in for us? Is the school the same school that she had the pen for earlier? Yeah. On yes. In that's the how Hunter uh, Hunter B fifteen found figures the, that, figures that mm-hmm. out. What was her Nexus event though? We don't know that. I don't think. We yeah, know I that think yet. that's the key thing mm. because we never really got any explanation as to why B fifteen went back there I and mean, found her. The ne- did, then, well, she Hunter B fifteen went back to lure those Minutemen in to show to start showing that the TVA is not what it looks like. I mean, look, this is Judge Ju- okay. Renslayer here. That part always it, it has confused me mm. since Wednesday as to why they went back there. Yeah, it's to start revealing that. Yeah, mm. yeah. I mean, the Nexus event could have been as simple as that she took that pen and she wasn't supposed to take that pen. I mean, they they mentioned how the Nexus events could be anything, you know, being late for work. So. Her wow. Nexus event doesn't have to be wow. something, wow. you know, profound or whatever. She could have just used the wrong pen or something and ended up becoming this huge member of the TVA. Um, and then we've got to talk about, you know, he who he who remains. We, we see Loki and Sylvie. They get to this um, citadel at the end of time. And, you know, you had your Miss Minutes moment, Dad, which you loved. I hate it. Um, and they meet this. I had nightmares about it. I still do. <laughs> she, she, you wake up in cold sweats at night. I do. You, you look over at the clock, but it only We're makes things worse. We're sitting there at the, at, the, at the chiropractor today, and Nathan just leans his phone over to me, and it's a picture of Miss Minutes, and I start <laughs> twitching. So. It's PTSD. I'm scared. <laughs> um, but we, we, we see her mention uh, this he who remains multiple over and over and over again. Um, and Is he who remains the same as Kang the Conqueror? Somebody in the comics, no. in the comics... There was a character who lived in the Citadel at the end of time named He Who Remains, but the character was not related to Kang in any way. In fact, he was like, not like he explicitly stated he was not Kang and stuff. So this character was actually responsible for creating the TVA in the comics, but it was just some wrinkly old man. Really no significance to how we have things or how it's set up here. What do you guys think about the MCU turning a variant of Kang into I like Who it. Remains? I like it. It works, and it plays with the storyline of the series very well, and I think it works a lot better with what they're trying to perceive and uh, how big this impact has on the MCU. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I feel like it's a, a better decision for this series, and so... Yeah, I mean, I, I I had heard of the character He Who Remains. Um, I did not realize that that he was a different character than Kang. So for me, watching this episode, when Kang is talking about, I've been called that before, and he talks about being called uh, a conqueror, a conqueror, a ruler. When he, a ruler, a conqueror. Well, I'm like, okay, conqueror. That's Kang. Boom, Kang the conqueror. We're good. He who remains. I didn't know that they were different characters, mm. so it worked fine for the more casual Marvel fan, the MCU fan, the person that isn't into the comics and it, you know, super deep. It worked uh, mm. for me. It also sets up. I'm just shocked at how far away Ant Man and Wasp Quantum Mania. I know. Is. Yeah, yeah the, 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 I think Sammy's going to get hit, touch. Yeah, on we, that we'll a definitely bit. touch. On it's that, just like but. way. It's way out there, and they introduced this character early on. Yeah. Uh, in the in Phase Four, 
is this character going to be the Thanos? We've talked about it before. Is he gonna is he gonna be the Thanos of, of we'll phase see. four of the future of the of the story? And is he gonna continue to show up and then come to this culmination? Because he was already announced as being Kang in Ant Man and Wasp. So we'll have to see. Yeah, I think he's gonna be the main bad guy. I mean, there were mentions of Thanos, you know, for a, a bit throughout the MCU before um, you know, Endgame. In fact, it, I mean, it only got more and more frequent. So I definitely think that this is the new Thanos. Um, and then we we got there was some interesting stuff between Loki and Sylvie in this episode, right? They were sitting there. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, yeah. Okay, not that there was a but, big interesting thing. <laughs> but right, we, we see them, you know, trying to decide whether they need to kill him or keep him alive, right? Because you know, you either kill him and start a multiversal war or Everything goes back to yeah. That dilemma was really interesting. Yeah, and you know we see them duke it out and stuff, but eventually they seems like they come to a resolution. They kiss. It was kind of weird, just being honest. It was it was as inevitable as the kiss at the end of Rise of Skywalker, right? But and it makes more sense when you realize. (laughs) (laughs) Come on, Um, when you realize why she did it, it was to get to the ten pad to get rid of him, which. Is such a Loki move. Do you guys think like the the Sylvie is the new Loki of our MCU? I think she's going to be bigger. Well, I mean, we just don't know what's happening to her now. She can't control the timeline. She doesn't want to. So what does she do now? Where does she go from here? And I'm sure we'll learn that in the next season because there's a lot of questions that we have that were unanswered. We got more questions in this episode than we did get answered. Mm. So I think that we're going to see Sylvie be a bad guy but i think we're gonna see some kind of just a weird dynamic between her and loki i think we see Mm. them again soon i really thought we were gonna get the moment where loki sacrificed himself for to save sylvie Mm -hmm. that would just be too rise of skywalker-esque it it felt like that was gonna (laughs) happen. yeah that would have been straight up well no i'd kind of suggested that that was what was going to happen and then sylvie was going to go forth and be the loki of the future of the Mm. mcu Uh, there was this moment where loki was standing between kang and sylvie and i thought that might be happening right that didn't happen um i'm i'm befuddled when it comes to Sylvie hmm. right now, okay. I don't know what to exactly. think about her. I don't know where she's going. I don't know why she did what she did. Was she always betraying Loki? Was she always playing him and manipulating him? Or were those moments that we saw in the, you know, th- three or so episodes before where they seem to be connecting, they seem to be having a real thing going on, a real, you know, real trust, real relationship, all of those things. Was that all real? And then she just, couldn't go, you know, couldn't go all the way at the end with it, mm-hmm. or was she manipulating him the entire time? No, I think it's just this has been her life's mission, and she just couldn't give that up yet. Um, but you know, we see her throw Loki through the time pad and stuff, and and he's going walking around all confused. Do you think that he that this Lo- our Loki is going to be critical in fixing things in the new phase of the MCU? Of course, of course, I think he's going to be overly critical i think he's going to be the one to kind of become the new renslayer for the tva and fix Hmm. it um but not become the leader of the tva he's going to understand what sylvie's purpose was what her glorious purpose was is that was mentioned like at least once every episode Mm -hmm. and honor that to the point where he's going to fix the timeline To the point where then he's going to let everybody from the TVA free and then live in their own timelines. They can create specific areas for them in the sacred timeline. They're going to do that for Loki and Sylvie. Right. So we'll see what happens, but that's just my speculation. I am... Unless Mobius, you know, we start season two and, uh, you know, you cut to that moment at the end of the episode where where Loki is with Mobius and is it Hunter? Hunter B-15. Hunter B-15. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he's standing there with them and they're like, who are you? You know, you know, all this kind of stuff. Unless we cut to that scene and Mobius is like, I'm just kidding, man. I know who you are. You know, like that. Um, <laughs> oh, please <laughs> do. Please <laughs> do. That would be amazing. <laughs> if we don't get that, which we won't, um, I love, I would love the idea, but we won't get it. Um, what we're going to see is the only person in the TVA that really knows what's going on right now is Loki. Right. Mm-hmm. 
Exactly. Everybody else is, is he's going to have to convince them all again. over again. Mm-hmm. But if Mobius doesn't know who Loki is, that means that there are no Lokis in that timeline. That that Mobius has never encountered a Loki. Yeah, that's true. And that has huge ramifications for season two. You know, the relationship between Mobius and Loki in the first season was built off the reality that Mobius has a relationship with Lokis. He understands mm. Lokis. Mm-hmm. Right? Now he doesn't know who this is. There's no history there. Why should he listen to anything that Loki says? Right. And now this guy he looks like he's having a complete breakdown. <laughs> The only thing that plays in his favor is the timeline has gone berserk. And so if he can explain why the timeline goes is going berserk and then verify that or, or mm. validate it, mm-hmm. then maybe Mobius and him can work together on something. But I think you're going to get a buddy cop show in a bigger way than we had the first season. Oh, it's going to be awesome. Um, and then the big moment of the episode, uh, after Sylvie you know, completes her glorious purpose and kills Kang or this, this version of Kang, we see the um, timeline fracture into countless new uh, futures. What do you, let's just go for the big question. What do you guys think this means for the future of the MCU? It, it changes what the MCU will be from now on. It's going to be a grander story to the point where we're not going to just get Captain America and shield or, Iron Man and maybe a bad guy and this kind of stuff. Mm. We're going to be getting them trying to wonder how to deal with this multiverse, how to deal with these timelines, because it's a problem. It is a real problem. And so we're going to see what's going to happen. And that's going to tie into everything we go on from now. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious to see if Shang-Chi fits into this. Mm -hmm. I'm curious to see if there's a need for the Ten Rings to be a part of something to help start to put things back together or control something. I think the Eternals, I think this is the event. Yeah. I saw you share that on Facebook. I think that makes sense. You know, we, we always wondered why they didn't speak up during Thanos. Well, there's one sacred timeline that's going on and that's still going on um, with this. Now you don't have a sacred timeline. I don't know if the Eternals are fully aware of what's going on, but if they tie the Eternals into this idea of there's a multiversal war and they no longer have to fight it, Go for it. You know how we see them in through multiple times? Exactly what, what I was thinking. What if those are oh, just alternate futures? Yeah. What are those just Different timelines. them timeline hopping? Yeah. It would be uh, really it would be really fun if the Eternals if this is the event that spars I think that, that forward. That makes more sense too. Because then that explains oh they didn't they weren't worried about Thanos because he was on the regu- the regular timeline. Right. But now things are out of control. Where Shane Chi is just going to be set on an alternate timeline and we're going to learn that at the end of the movie. It's going to be set in the same timeline with like the Incredible Hulk movie. <laughs> right. That's why we saw Abomination. Yeah, well I and I also do think though that this basically confirms we're going to get like the Toby Maguire, Andrew Garfield, Willem Dafoe. Come on, let's get Edward Jamie Morton Fox. back as a whole we could we could get edward norton back as hulk we could get you know all of this happening all over again i think that this opens that up now what's what i'm curious to see happens from a filmmaking perspective going forward is whether or not these timelines become sort of their own mcu mcu a mcu b mcu c where they have their own little timelines that are going on and their own stories that are happening in these different timelines and you may have different characters and then somehow they interact together um in like dr strange or ant-man wasp or something like that kind of like endgame brought everybody together what if there's a big moment at the end of phase four or phase five or phase six something like that that brings different (laughs) brings different timelines together i think you you're on to something i don't think they're going to do that with this i think what they're going to do is they're going to take your idea basically but use that with the spider-man movies and the x-men movies maybe and the fantastic four movies and use them use this movie as a way to bring that all into the marvel all almost at the same time saying that they're alternate timelines but they have to come together kind of like what you're saying we can, okay. we can have hugh jackman back as wolverine now old wolverine but yeah uh wolverine i got cgi yeah. Yeah, I got CGI. Um, so you do you think we're going to see the effects of of this? I think it, it, I think everything has changed. I think mm-hmm. that I, I I don't know how you go back to 
before, I, you know, I joked on Facebook, uh, a post about it on Wednesday. There's, you know, we're going to look at the MCU as being BL and AL before Loki and after Loki. I, I mean, think honestly, it, yeah, it really feels like everything is different now. Yeah. Going and that's forward. like one difference between this show than, um, WandaVision and, and Captain. It's a huge Falcon difference. Winter Soldier. Those were just basically origin stories for the characters. This did something major to the MCU, almost bigger than Endgame in, in some ways. Um, we, we're not supposed to see Kang until Quantumania. Do you think that somehow Ant-Man and Wasp are going to unwittingly release him? No, I think we're going to be seeing effects from Kang and Mm. other things throughout the rest of the show. I think we're going to see that specifically in Doctor Strange 2. That's going to be a huge part of it, if not in Spider-Man 3 first. And so... I think we're going to be seeing a lot of effects, and I, I, I mean, why don't we? Yeah, I just this just popped up. When are we going to get a Spider Man three trailer? It's very soon Shang-Chi. when it comes out. It'll be on Shang Chi. When does the movie come out? Shang Chi comes out in September. That's a couple months. They're holding it back. Yeah, Maybe surprised. we get something before then. Now that they've done the yeah, uh, Loki, the, the Loki stuff, mm-hmm. um, we could get it. Um, all right, just for fun, a little speculation or, or a little fun. Now that pretty much anything's possible in the MCU, I want to know if you could have literally anything happen, what would it be? Yeah, give your, give yourselves a second because it's a, a tall order. It's like, a, like anything, if you could go anywhere, anytime. What would, where would it be? Right. Yeah. That's this is our version of that. Oh, I already know mine. I'm gonna wait for oh, okay. no. Go ahead. No, I'm still thinking. Oh, I I'm gonna go back to last episode. I want to see Captain America and Red Guardian battle it out. <laughs> okay. I still want to see that, and I think we can see that kind of stuff now um, because they've opened up this idea of all. I mean, that one already kind of exists in the in the timeline. Right. But that's the kind of stuff that we can see. I want to see a, a Tony return, Tony Stark return. Oh, that was mine. At, um, in, <laughs> in Iron Man uh, as a character, at least at some point. Maybe go back in time. I want to see. I want to see Captain America go back to thousand years and deal with the eternals yeah in something so they yeah. so they, they they call him captain rogers in the trailer right so we know what's going on mm-hmm. i want to see those kinds of weird i want it to get really weird right Maybe. i, I want to see i mentioned this after loki i want to see we got that reveal of spider-man's doctor strange suit with the hot toys with thing. the hot toys yeah. and the funko like this is an official suit in no way right. home i want to see him timeline hopping or somehow and but like his first time, he's not understanding how to do it. He's just going through fifteen different timelines, and he at least like appears in one of the Spider Verse timelines, and he just goes animated, and then we see a bunch of weird things, and that's just what I would like, <laughs> I like to it. see. Yeah, and I kind of want to see. I want to see Tony return as Iron Man, but to keep things fresh, I kind of want it to be like an evil Iron Man somehow. I don't know if that exists in the comics or anything like that, but I think that would be a really cool concept to bring him back, but keep things interesting. Also like a Tony that didn't have the influence of pepper pots in his life. No, I'm talking like full on evil. Tony. Oh, wow. Okay. Like okay. messed up Tony. But something interesting though, is there's a version of Kang in the comics that's goes good and it's iron lad. So they could oh, wow. even like, <laughs> No, I'm serious. So, like, they could have, like, a good cool. evil Iron Man. Oh, we, we, okay. If Spider Man's mention hopping, at least, like, put a reference to DC in there. That would, that would slip. I don't know. Like, they go through some that. timeline and you, and got, you just see Batman you, you going see. through the top and it just. <laughs> Can they do that, like, I'm legally? Batman. Technically. So, yeah. No. If you, you don't mention the characters. No, nah, I think you got to be careful about that. So, yeah. Um, well, it's a multiverse of madness, and we're all just living in it at this point. Uh, <laughs> it's it's safe to say that the MCU will never be the same after this episode of Loki, uh, like you said, uh, BL, AL. Um, and there's good news. This isn't the last we've oh. seen of our titular character. You uh, use that word again. I, it was the finale. I had to. Yeah. Um, season two is happening, and I know we're all excited for it. But uh, Nate, you're up to bat. Uh, good one. Thank you. Oh, we didn't have a dad joke from dad, so we, we had to have one from you. But I am back. Yeah, Miss Minutes scared all the dad jokes <laughs> out of me. So. <laughs> He's still recovering. I'm back with the uh, regu- regularly scheduled programming. Um, as you know, Batman takes on the Batman who laughs, and it gets weird. And there's a big twist at the end of this, and I think you'll guys enjoy Wasn't there it. A big twist so last time? All right, there's a big twist, I think, in every single one. All right, well, that's coming up after these ads, specifically chosen for you by the one guy at Warner Brothers who actually realizes that making Space Jam 2 was a really bad decision. <laughs> this is Tatooine Sons. Right. So, uh, you know, now that we've already, we've got the multiverse and all of these things, anybody could end up being a superhero. 
Um, that's oh, true. That's my point. Uh, one of those superheroes that you could actually become in real in the real world is a child champion, and you can sponsor a child through one child for just thirty nine dollars a month. You're going to provide food, medicine, education, social development, and the most important thing that you can provide to somebody, and that is hope. Um, hope that their life can be better. Um, hope that they have a purpose. Um, and a you get glorious to, purpose, a, a truly glorious <laughs> yeah. uh, purpose. And, um, you get to be a part of that. So go to the link in the show notes, um, check out one child, learn a little bit more about it. I change a child's life this week. Have you ever danced with the devil in the pale moonlight? Yeah, I can fly. I'm here to fight for truth and justice in the American way. The people in this room, which one is A, wearing a spangly outfit, and B, not of use? There's only one God, man, and I'm pretty sure he doesn't dress like that. That man has no limits. Apparently, there is a Batman who laughs there at you. There is. Yeah. It's a pretty cool statue, and you it can is. get that in real life. You can get every single one of those statues right. yeah, in everything real life. So whoever like, designed those, they put the, the, exactly. the digital the, the, version. The black and white series, which That's is cool. some of the coolest series mm-hmm. that we have. But we're at part three of five this week. There's five? Yes. Has there always been five? No, this is what the plan has always been to divide yeah. it up into five. Oh, okay. Because, yeah. you know, f- fandom.com split it up into five, and it's just easy. Um, so at this point... You, if you, it's been a while. It has. It has if been, you remember, yeah. Batman was stuck inside of um, in Arkham, mm-hmm. and Batman laughs. Kind of took the form of a, a security guard, and he killed some guards and p- p- pinned it on Batman. Right. So right. now, um, at this point, Batman is cornered by guards and is about to get shot by them. Oh no! So we're gonna have a little fun this week. We're gonna do kind of a couple choose your own adventure kind of things. <laughs> so, okay. what do you think Batman should do to get out of this situation? Are we doing our, our like that role playing game? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, what would you yeah. do? Um, what, should, what would you do? Okay, does he have his like gear and stuff on yes, him? He has his gear and the nth metal helmet. Oh, on, he's got a face which looks like helmet. a spiky thing, right? It's a spiky thing. Yeah. As scary oh, as can be. I thought that was man. very scary. Um. Okay. Smoke bomb. And he like grapples, and as he swings, he like kicks the guard in the face. Okay, got it, Dad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we got another one of these, so you better not he, run out. He headbutts somebody with that spiky thing. That's pretty violent out. for That's, Batman. It looks violent, man. <laughs> it's like I can't get that it's, image it's, out. So, <laughs> 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 <But, laughs> all righty. So Batman actually threatens the guards and their families to get away, leaning more into the Batman who laughs yeah, side dark of Batman. things. So he this threatens is, the families. He too. does. Messed up. So while this was going on, the real Batman who laughs was going underground to meet the Court of Owls. Hey, I know about yeah, those you guys. Know, before I go any further, this gets quite dark here. We're, uh, because, more dark? Because it's Batman who laughs and he's alone and he he's does what he wants man. and he's very scary, very scary man. Uh, okay. Just, just kind of wanted to make that clear. But he makes a case that he needs something from the Court of Owls. They decline and consider punishing him for their amusement. That's so who are the Court of Owls? Have we had them in this series so far? No, this is the first time we've seen so them. So quickly. So the Court of Owls is a seconds, court that's go. been there for generations, ever since Gotham was made. They're kind of like the people that have overseen everything. They're the Illuminati. The, yeah, the rich people that they, they go underground, they wear these cool owl masks. They're really, really cool villains, and they have these talons. Where they can sometimes um, just be undead sometimes. Like, they can't be killed. Okay. They're immortal by some virus. They're like assassins. They're assassins. Um, so, yeah, they're they're deadly. And that's really what the So, they're Illuminati is. and they rule everything because yes. they're rich and they're powerful. Exactly. And, they're and they have undead uh, they're, assassins. Yeah, they're twisted. So, um, the Court of Owls sends the littlest one, which is just a little girl in a wheelchair, to decide the fate of Batman who what? laughs. It is just wow. a little girl in in a wheelchair. And she she has a mask and everything. Oh, that's um, nice. But the girl denies his request and sends talons to dispose of him. 
Okay. But the Talons come into view with no arms, and the whole, so they're like the minions of they their, are, the, they okay. are. they're assassins that they do their biddings for people if they want and stuff. But the Talons come into view with no arms, and the whole court goes into a complete frenzy. And the Batman who laughs explodes some of the maze that the how to get out, changing the complete directions of everything because they already know how to get out. You'll know that, Sammy. It's yes. very hard oh to explain. Oh my goodness, that seemed basically no. there's a la- the the court of owls have a labyrinth everywhere and it's really weird but um, um the little girl makes a plea for her life saying that the court will grant him any wish he wants the batman who laughs walks towards her and says that the only thing he wants to see is the whole court to die screaming wow and then pushes the girl off and oh into some water god this is a bad guy they're it, really making sure we exactly. know he's a bad guy and so now you, he's evil so like now not you, bad guy not no. bad guy Evil. Loki's a bad guy. This guy's evil. He's this is Joker. Evil. So now you start to see the horribly evil side of Batman Who Laughs. Do you guys think that Bruce will actually be able to hold it on long enough to take the Batman Who Laughs down, or will he give in to the side not that give we in. see? Good lord! So he's in the process in our story right now of of turning into the he's Batman. Very who close laughs. of becoming Batman Who Laughs. No. I can't have that. It's not good. I, I, I mean, he's, it's, it's, we still got a lot of story to go, so I'm hoping he turns good. <laughs> we do have a lot of story to go. Um, the Batman who laughs then pulls an alternate Bruce Wayne, which is what he's been doing, to this dimension while still in the court because this alternate Bruce Wayne is the leader of the Court of Owls in, another in his dimension. other dimension. Yes. You know, this makes a lot more sense now after Loki, like understanding the timeline. It kind of does. Yeah. See? Yeah. You're like, oh, that's not, that's not a weird idea at all. Um, he fights him. Presumably to the death, but we don't see the outcome. Um, they were kind enough for that. Um, <laughs> they were kind enough. A little while later, Batman gets a call from James Gordon Jr. that he found Commissioner Gordon in the sewers running from the Grim Knight. You That's remember the Batman that? with guns. Yes, you remember that when he set him loose for a hunt for a recreation? Um, so he's Craven Batman. Yeah, kind of. Um, so Batman sends a vehicle to pick up the Gordons to talk about is to talk in the Batcave about the situation and what's going on and how they fix it. Like the whole family? Mm-hmm. No, just this is two Gordons. Just Jimmy, James Gordon. James. Just Jimmy Gordon and James Gordon. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, but Wait a second. I'm going to stop. Because I remember from Batman, the long Halloween. Mm-hmm. Isn't Barbara Gordon's mom, Barbara? Yes. And Jim Gordon's dad's, Jim, Jimmy Gordon's dad's James. So that's James and James. Mm-hmm. Barbara, Barbara, and Barbara. Jim, James. You, don't They're just not creative it. with names. <laughs> exactly. They didn't think, you know, we don't have to be creative with names of a side character in a comic storyline, but it becomes important. Um, <laughs> Batman then informs them that they have the upper hand because they can activate the last laugh protocol. If you remember what that is, it's kind of like what Scarecrow did in Batman Begins. That's okay. right. Okay. Um, the last laugh protocol before the Batman who laughs does. So it won't poison all of Gotham because he doesn't have the poison in the water system yet. Okay. Okay. So, it's, yeah. so they're thinking ahead. All right. um, okay, so so do you guys think this is a trap? Oh, jeez. And this is actually what the Batman Who Laughs wants. Okay, well, I wasn't thinking that until you suggested it. Uh, this really does feel like an RPG, and if we make the wrong decision, like, everybody dies. <laughs> I do dies. feel like it, if I'm going to make the wrong decision. There is a Batman Who Laughs, I think, RPG on Amazon, so. Well, I think that Weird. I'm going to go ahead and say, no, they need to do it, and it's not a trap. Okay. I'm yeah. I'm holding out hope that Bruce is still he's okay in there. Got it. All right. So Gordon gives the go ahead ah. and is about to activate the protocol, but then Batman realizes that this is oh, no. what the Batman who laughs has been planning all along, and that's why he let Gordon escape. Crap. Because oh. only Gordon and Batman can activate it. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's do another choose your adventure thing here. Um, what should Batman do next also, because you, of this? If you wanted to know, every time we were sitting here waiting to like make a decision for this, I have that whole like deal or no deal soundtrack going through my head. <laughs> like that's what's going on in my head. Like while we're sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Alrighty. So what do you think Batman should do next? Now that he figured out the Batman who laughs plan. Um. He. He puts, he makes an anti-toxin thing, puts it in the water, and then he lets himself go full Batman Who Laughs so he can defeat the other Batman Who Laughs. He's got to be on the same playing field. And then at a certain time, he says, Gordon, activate it. He activates it. Everybody's okay. That's actually a really good one. Yeah, that, that, that would be interesting if it was true. It's um, not true. Okay, dang so it. Now I know that's not true. <laughs> I was really liking um, that one. 
I, 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 I have, you have no clue. Got, I'm not. All righty. So let's move on. <laughs> Batman then receives a call from the Batman who laughs. He has cell service. <laughs> it's like a hologram time kind of thing. It's like, oh, it's like zoom. Cool. Oh, um, okay. So, it's a zoom gram. And, and he answers it, even though commissioner Gordon said that's probably a bad idea, but you think? Batman doesn't care. Um, Batman who laughs tells him that the last laugh protocol is not to protect Gotham, but fortify it to conquer other parts of the oh, world. That's nice. It was essentially a castle to destroy the world, and it's been planned for centuries by the Court of Owls. Illuminati. Exactly. And this one city has a lot of things going on in it. <laughs> yeah, it's time to move to Ohio. <laughs> for real? No, that has Black Widow in oh, it. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Batman hearing this, it makes him lose all faith in his city and its oh. people. Oh, why the people? Before I move on, because they're violent. It's it's always been about violence. That's, That's what true. all the it Gotham's all up. been about. Before I move on and reveal what happens with this decision, what do you guys think is going to happen here? Hmm. He resets the timeline. <laughs> <laughs> Mobius shows up. <laughs> And with Loki, wow. they're with on a buddy cop <laughs> mission. He's like, "Y'all brought in way too he, many he Bruce Wayne's in, here." He comes it's in on messed a, up. a jet it's ski a, through the waterfall it. entrance <laughs> of. <laughs> yeah, charge. we never got the jet ski. We never yeah. did yet. Anyway, we never got the jet ski True. yet. All right, but oh, while Batman who laughs continues telling him things that makes him lose more and more faith in the city, Alfred is telling him over the comms that the toxin in his bloodstream is at critical, but Alfred is muted by the Batman who laughs, and he convinces Batman to activate the protocol, so he does, as the serum takes more and more control over Batman. I called it! You did. The last laugh protocol is now activated, and Batman is, like, basically on the verge of becoming Batman Who Laughs. Man, I'm good. And there's going to be two Batman Who Laughs. Yeah. Batman I'm who still laughs. trying to remember why there's two from the beginning of this. Where's there's this two? Is that a different... Is it an no. alternate version no, of no, Batman no. Who Laughs? Wait. What are you talking about? The, well, the original Batman Who Laughs in this, yes. you've got Bruce Wayne turning into Batman Who Laughs. Mm-hmm. Where did the and original one come from? Yeah. The original came from one came from like negative eleven, a different world. Oh, it's just a, a different, different Earth. Okay, that's, that's uh, all I need. Mean. Yeah, so, what I so asking. here, here's a quick crash course on the multiverse for DC. So you have Earth Prime, which is basically Earth Zero, the sacred timeline. Uh-huh. Then you have every other Earth, uh-huh. which is basically the timeline branches. But uh-huh. then you have this other side that that Loki hasn't touched on yet. It's the dark multiverse. It's what would happen if the c- superheroes were not good. And, and that so, was in the flash. That's point where my bad guy pair, Tony kind comes of from. Ish, kind of bad guy Tony. Yeah, bad guy Tony. So those go into the negative storylines, and there's a whole comic line called Tales from the Dark Multiverse. the Earths that they focus on and right. why they're like that. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, it's really Alrighty. cool. I enjoy it. it. It's a good series. But well, everything has kind of gone wrong now. Uh, yeah, it's, for it's, sure. <laughs> So join me next time as we learn more about the fallout from this if there isn't something more important that happens next week. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm not going to sleep tonight. All right. Is there <laughs> anything else that you guys want to talk about? Anything else? Yeah. So that guy who had his arm broken by the Red Guardian and Black Widow, right. you know, everybody's mm-hmm. favorite scene. That was uh, awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he claims to be the first mutant in the MCU named Ursa Major. He's like, I wasn't a big enough character in that movie. I got to get my name out there. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of cool. It is kind of cool, though. He's like, I had my hand broken for this. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but the first critics' reviews... For Suicide Squad, right? Yeah, are they good? They're very, very positive. Really? Oh, More so great. than the first one. Every time I see these trailers, I'm like, I just don't know. All Every right. time I see it, I'm like, I'm a little more intrigued, but I'm still overly cautious. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's going to be a special episode of Disney Gallery, The Mandalorian. It's going to explore Luke Skywalker's return in season oh. two of the finale. That's not going to go poorly at all for Star Wars fans. As as Mark Hamill talks about how awesome it was to be the Luke Skywalker of Return of the Jedi and to wield his lightsaber again and be all of this, all of the Last Jedi haters are going to just latch on to everything that Mark Hamill says in oh, that, crap. and it's going to make... Any things go crazy um, with that. So um, we got that look to look forward to. All right. Uh, thanks for listening to Tatooine Sons, a pop culture podcast. Yeah. If you had a good time listening, it'd be awesome if you could share this with friends. Yeah. And of course, the show, it's only a small part of the Tatooine Sons multiverse. So oh. be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter to get in on all the action. Yeah. Thanks for doing that. We've been having a lot of fun on Facebook the last few weeks. You guys are killing it on that. Um, Don't forget to follow the show on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss an episode. And uh, make sure you drop us a review on Podchaser. 
When you do that, we're going to make a donation in your honor to one child to help a child living in extreme poverty. What are we talking about next week? Sam, what are you talking about next week? I have no idea. Maybe I'll talk. Maybe though, hopefully something like Lord of the Rings will happen and I can talk about that because I haven't talked about Lord of the Rings at all. <laughs> Even though your tra- your intro to your segment we'll just, is Lord of the Rings. Right. We'll just watch Lord of the Rings. And, I'm, I'm and okay that. with that. We'll have to see if we can find a topic. Nate, you're going to talk about Batman Who Laughs again? Probably, if there's nothing else that Im- important that comes out. My job's easy. I get the bad bad. bad, bad. So. We might get a trailer for Long Halloween. I'm expecting it any time now. Watch, we'll maybe, get another one. Maybe we'll get a trailer, a trailer for Spider-Man, and, and you won't be able that. to talk about anything else. All right. Anything else you'd like to say? May the force be with you. May the force be with you. May the force be with you, always. This party's over. I like that monkey. Don't get technical with me. Join, please. Yep, yep.